I just got this guitar. The last owner told me he tuned it his special way. I don't know what tuning this is, but this is definitely not standard tuning. So let's see how this guitar sounds in this special tuning. sound what is up welcome to every single guitars where the goal of this channel is to review every single guitar ever made today i have a guitar that i don't think i have reviewed yet on this channel i reviewed several different models of guitars several different brands of guitars but this particular guitar even though i played them i have not reviewed this guitar yet so today i have a 2011 ibanez rg series the exact model is rg4 ex QM1 with the infamous Floyd Rose tremolo system and the locking nut system as well. So even though I haven't reviewed any Ibanez's on this channel, I have reviewed a handful of Floyd Rose guitars. I have reviewed a 80s Fender Stratocaster made in Japan with the stock Floyd Rose system. I've also reviewed a Yamaha guitar from the 90s with a Floyd Rose system as well. And now I have this guitar, this Ibanez with the Floyd Rose system again. So my impression with Floyd Rose guitars, to be honest, I really do like the concept of Floyd Rose. You know, a lot of the guitarists who use Floyd Rose use this guitar for some crazy stuff that they do. You know, dive bombs with the whammy, just going crazy with the whammy bar, a lot of shredding up and down, you know, tapping and whatnot. And usually when you play genres like that, the guitar goes out of tune very easily. Because let's say that this is a standard strat and I was doing dive bombs with the whammy bar, the guitar will go out of tune that's just a fact of a guitar you know strings are meant to be bent but they're not meant to be abused when you bend it to me a dive bomb is abusing the strings you know that's not really a normal way to play the guitar I mean, what is normal though you know but because those genres and those playing styles exist they had to come up with a system to make sure the guitar stays in tune no matter what you do to the strings and that's where the Floyd Rose tremolo system comes in and why the Floyd Rose was invented. Because of this unique Floyd Rose bridge system right here, as well as these locking bolt nuts, this part of the guitar and this part of the guitar is completely firm and stuck. So no matter what you do with the whammy and whatnot, the guitar will stay in tune. Assuming that this is all properly set up, which unfortunately it's not right now for this guitar. So even though I do like and respect the concept of the Floyd Rose. For me, the most difficult thing and the thing I don't like about Floyd Rose is, dude, it just takes so much time to restring a guitar. It takes so much time to tune a guitar. If you wanna tune a guitar, you know, a regular guitar, you can just put it in your tuner and then just tune it, you know? But for this, you can't just tune it and then expect it to tune. You have to take out these nuts and these bolts, which requires a special Allen wrench tool. And then once you take it off, you have to tune it and then get these fine tuners on the bottom to match as well. And to be honest, even though I've owned a couple of Floyd Rose, I've never understood how to properly do the tuning thing exactly. The top, I understand because it's just like any other guitar. But what I realized is that when I was trying to tune this guitar in standard tuning, and I got all this done correctly, after bolting the nuts back the guitar just goes out of tune completely again so to me that's the biggest trouble i'm having with any floyd rose guitars it's just tuning this guitar standard tuning and properly so every time i tune a floyd rose it's always slightly out of tune it's just never 
perfectly in tune. And that's just my lack of knowledge and my lack of experience with Floyd Rose guitars. Another thing that I always respected and liked about Ibanez guitars is even though they kind of took this body shape from a Fender Stratocaster influence, they tried to do something unique with the inlay design as well as the headstock design. Usually for a lot of guitar companies, it's always some kind of variation of the Strat headstock, you know, the Gibson headstock. And for acoustics, it's always some variation of the Martin headstock. And that makes sense because those headstocks are arguably the best headstocks for it acoustic guitar or electric guitar. Even though design is subjective to the individual, you know, the Fender headstock design, the Gibson headstock design are just classic designs. You know, you just can't mistake what guitars those are if you see the headstock. And I think Ibanez knew that fact that every guitar basically looks like a Strat or a Gibson. So they made a completely unique and different looking headstock design. And surprisingly, I actually really do like this headstock design. It's not a design that you really see for any other electric guitars out there. This is a very unique design that other guitar companies don't have um, from what I've seen. So that's something that I really respect about Ibanez. So first impression, I'd say the build quality of this is pretty good. It's not the highest build quality guitar that I've felt or owned, but for a sub 450, 400, around that range, for a guitar that costs around 400, 500 bucks, this is very good build quality in my opinion. The wood is not the highest quality wood that I've seen and I could tell that this isn't actual wood. This is probably base wood or bass wood or something like that and I can tell that because there's a small chip on the back of the finish and you can see the wood underneath but the quality of this wood is not really a high quality type of wood but even though the wood is not really the highest quality the finish and the paint job that they did over it is very good quality so that makes up for the overall build quality construction but I'd say that the highest quality part of this guitar is probably the overall neck finish and the fretboard quality this neck I've actually never felt this type of neck before this is a somewhat slimmer neck but this is for sure some variation of a u-shaped neck it's not a modern c it's not a chunky c or oval type guitar but it's a really good and comfortable neck for chords you know like bar chords and and really comfortable for tapping and also playing up and down the fretboard. This cutaway makes it very easy to go up and down. But tapping, even though I don't really tap much, this is probably one of the most comfortable guitars to tap. I mean, I don't have an amp right now plugged in, but I'm gonna do a separate tone review to show you those tones. But for rock, metal, music that's geared more towards gain and distortion, this is an excellent guitar for that kind of music. These pickups are stock Ibanez pickups, and I don't know what exact you know, wiring and electronical stuff they did. But for the neck, it's a humbucking and it says INF3. For the middle, it's a single coil and it says INFS3. And then for the bridge, it's also a humbucking again and it has INF4. So I'm assuming some kind of Ibanez in-house pickup system. But just from a sound quality, the guitar sounds very good. It's almost very similar to a Strat sound with a little bit of humbucking warmth because there is a humbucking too. Very simple guitar, two knobs, one volume, one master tone, and the classic Stratocaster five-way selector tip switch. I'd say the weakest part of this guitar, other than the basswood, which is weak but not a deal breaker, but I'd say that if I were to own this guitar for a long time, the thing I would change is probably the tuners. These tuners are pretty good tuners stock, but just the overall construction of this is not really high quality metal or some kind of inferior metal that they use. And that's usually the case for a lot of Asian made import guitars. This is made in Indonesia. Usually, like I said, the body and the neck is usually very good but they sometimes cheap out on the hardware. The metal on this is pretty good for the knobs is pretty good. It's not the highest metal, but you know, small plastic like the selector tip is not that high quality. To be honest, the quality of the Floyd Rose trim area, it's pretty good metal, but it's not the highest quality metal that I've seen. And usually I like to keep my guitars all original, but since this is a Floyd Rose, where the biggest importance is probably the tuning ability, the tuning stability. You know, if you want this guitar to truly play properly and stay in tune, you have to change the tuners to something very good because what's the point of having a Floyd Rose nut locking system and this trem system with a shitty tuner system? It's just 
kind of goes backwards, you know? So if I had to make that one criticism of this guitar, it would be the tuners. Overall, if I had to give this guitar a rating, build, this is probably a seven out of 10 in terms of the build. Overall build, like I say, is pretty good. Neck is good, body is good, but this basswood, it's just not a high quality wood at all. There are a lot of basswood guitars that sound good, just like this, but compared to ash, alder, walnut, spruce, and whatever, mahogany, it's just no comparison um, in terms of overall wood quality. Tone, even though I haven't done a tone yet on this video, tone, I'd probably give this a 7.5. The tone is better than the overall build, but still the overall build is pretty good. So I say that if you're looking for a affordable yet quality Ibanez guitar with some kind of Floyd Rowe system, maybe check out these Ibanez RG series because that's exactly what it is. It's just a solid guitar with great potential. If my modified correctly. And I'm talking about the tuners and setting up this Floyd Rose tram system, which is a pain in the ass. But overall, it's a pretty decent guitar.